Okay, so we have an upper and lower model or maxillary mandibular cast. So the word model and the cast are synonymous, right, in our industry. And these are, again, achieved by the preliminary impressions that uh, you, uh, you get with your client at the first appointment, possibly the first appointment. So once we pour the cast and we trim them, they look like something like this. Ideally, they should have a symmetrical looking base and this should be easy to handle. So the idea with these casts is, is to fabricate an, an upper and lower custom trays. These are trays made from a light cure resin that are used to achieve a functional impression on the next clinical appointment. Unlike the first impression that we got, which was the preliminary impression, we used alginate, which is not, uh, it's a great material for a lot of things, but not for full upper and lower dentures. Okay, so the idea is to go from here to here. And in order to do that, we need to identify some anatomical landmarks on the models to be able to fabricate these custom trays at the right, with the right shape and of course the right length. You can see there that I've indicated an outline where I think the denture is going to extend and I fabricated this custom tray approximately to that line or very close to it. So let's start by putting some lines on our maxillary cast. Now I got some multicolored pencils. You don't need all these colors, but certainly just for demonstration purposes and maybe with the first or second models that you guys work on, uh, it's nice to differentiate between the different colors. It just makes a nicer visual, okay? But if you only have a black uh, colored pencil, that's fine too. Okay, let's start with our maxillary cast and you guys, you can follow me along. Yes, if you haven't um, got a set of models yet, they're out in front of the class, you can just grab an upper and lower cast. So the first thing I like to do, and this is just my way of doing it, there's no wrong or right way, as long as all of the landmarks are identifiable on the cast, it really doesn't matter which way you do it. But certainly the last thing we're going to do is outline the extension of our custom tray, okay? So if anybody had a chance to review the lecture or remember from last time, can somebody maybe tell me one of the possible landmarks that we can identify on the maxillary cast? Labial frenum which is this little attachment in front of the model here, okay? So I'm gonna do that in red pencil. You can certainly do it in black pencil, that's fine too. And it's very important to identify these freedoms because we need to uh, make sure that our custom trade does not impinge on the freedoms and goes around them. There's also a couple of other freedoms on the side of the model or the buckle aspect. And these are the buckle freedoms. Sometimes you might have one, sometimes you might have two. And I specifically designed this model just to differentiate the fact there might be one or there might be two. Usually if there's one on one side, there's one on the other. And if there's two on one side, usually there's two on the other, but I just made the scenario so we can cover all aspects. Another landmark is this incisive papilla, which is, it looks like a little projection right on the top of the ridge, at the front or the interior portion. 
So as we're going through the course, I'm gonna use some common language that you guys are used to already, and then I'm gonna mix it up with some of the dental terminology as well. So the front or the interior. So eventually I'll wean you off the front and the back and we'll call it interior posterior. And usually, not always, but I would, most, most cases, this incisor of papilla is over what we call the mid-palatal suture, or the midline. So I'll change up some colors again. In the midline, you can almost see it running down the middle of the cast. Starting from the incisor of papilla, and usually it bisects the incisor of papilla, and it matches with the labial frenum. Not always, but most of the time. Another landmark that are very important to identify because they need to be covered by the custom tray and eventually reproduced in the final impression are the maxillary tuberosities, which are areas of primary support for the maxillary denture. And usually they're easily identifiable like this one here on the left side, even though as you're looking to your model right now, you're thinking, well, this is the left, the right side, but we're always thinking of the patient side, not the way we view it, but it's from the patient's perspective. So this would be the maxillary left tuberosity. The other one is not so clear, but it's there. Like so. So it's very important to identify the tuberosities because just behind or posterior to the tuberosities, we have what we call the hamlier notch, which is this little depression just behind or distal. Right here. That's the Hamler notch. Somewhere on either side of the midline, back here. Now these be can become very vague to identify on a cast. There's a couple little depressions, little dimples, what we call the Palatini fovea. And we need to identify those. in order to fabricate our custom trays properly. We can also identify the crest of the ridge, which is the highest portion of this residual ridge. And you can just take your pencil and make just an outline on the highest point of the ridge all the way back to the Hamler notch. There's many more landmarks that we can identify on this, on this model, like the Rugai, but we don't need those right now. We just need enough information here so we can start outlining this line here to determine the extension of the custom tray. So let's start off by outlining what we think. So this is an educated guess where we think the denture is going to finish. And I think the easiest starting point would be back here, at the back of the palate. So 
we're gonna go about two to three millimeters posterior to the palatine fulvia. And we're gonna go right over or just behind distal posterior to the Hamler notch. And we're gently gonna join those two lines together. So you might have to rotate your model to make it ideal with your view. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Notice this line is not really a straight line. It's got a slight concavity towards the front or the interior portion of the model. So if we turn this, the model to its side, and this is the, the most challenging uh, part of this, outlining where we think this custom tray is going to finish. Because the closer we can get it to where we think the denture is going to finish, it'll make it a lot easier to perform the final impressions when you see your client next. So one thing I know for sure is that I need to go around these freedoms. So I'm gonna give myself about a millimeter or so of relief around these freedoms. And as you're doing this, again, we talked about creating some good habits. If you've noticed, I have my model anchored to the, to the bench and I also have my hand that I'm holding my pencil with anchored to something, whether it's the model or the bench or maybe the other side or my left hand. So I'm always anchored to something to give me a nice pivoting point and it creates a much smoother, smoother outline. So I'm gonna start with this buckle freedom here on the right side and I'm gonna work my way down. And usually if you hold your model at about 45 degrees and let your pencil kind of find the deepest point, that's usually the junction between the attached and detached gingiva and that's where the denture should finish. So your outline is going to have is going to look like something like this. So notice that I'm stroking the pencil back and forth in this outline now. I want it to be very, very heavy outline. Not a light one, but make sure you make it nice and heavy. Because we're going to put some wax on top of this later, like you see here. And then we're gonna adapt our light cure material. And if you have a very light pencil outline, you're not gonna be able to see it properly so you can cut it at that exact outline of the pencil. So that looks pretty good. So I'm almost about a third of the way done or a quarter of the way done. So I'll continue around the model and I'll, I'll start again at the labial freedom now and once again, I'm going to give myself a little relief. Millimeter to a millimeter and a half around this labial frenum. And if you're not sure where this line should be, it's quite identifiable in this model. But if you're having trouble with your cases, what you can do, you can make some vertical striations like this. which are perpendicular to the surface of the cast. And if you turn your model over, you can see the deep, deepest point because that's where you have the greatest angle of those striations. So once again, I'm holding my model anchored to my bench. I'm holding it at about 45 degrees.
and I'm trying to scrub, scribe, sorry, scribe a line on my cast. by going back and forth with my pencil. And that'll take you to the deepest point. And right here, I'm gonna join the two together. Notice that <clears throat> when I go around the frenums, it's a very gentle transition. Nothing is sharp, nothing is straight. There's nothing about the human anatomy that's straight. So. Let's keep it that way in everything that we do. Sometimes you might have little bubbles. Like you see here, there's a little bubble right there. You can take maybe your Lacron carver or any instrument and gently pick that out. Okay, I'm going to start back here and make my way across again. So I got to the Hemmler notch here. I want to make sure that I totally cover the tuberosity. And once again, make sure your outline is nice and heavy. I'm holding my cast at about 45 degrees and my pencil almost automatically finds the deepest portion. Around this buccal frenum. I'll do the same thing here. And if you're not sure where the next step is, move to another part of the cast. And the more lines that you put on there, the more identifiable it becomes where you need to place the next line. Again, rotate your model so it's at about 45 degrees in relation to the bench. I got my right hand anchored somewhere on the cast or on the bench. And I'm gently stroking my pencil back and forth. So the last little bit here. So you should have something like this on your mom. So again, this is an, estim an educated guess where I think this denture should finish according to my preliminary impression and my preliminary model. Notice that these extensions, this labial extension, the one on the left and the one on the right, and as well as the buccal extensions, all the way back here. When viewed from the front, they're almost the same length. Very unlikely you're gonna have one that's grossly longer than the others. They're pretty much the same length. And we wanna make sure that we maximize this extension here of this labial, what we call flange, because this gives you um, a great stability for the denture as well as it enhances the suction as well. Yes? Uh, very unlikely that's going to happen, but if that's the case, you can go around both of them if you had to. Yeah. Because as you'll see when we work through the border molding and the final impressions, some of the imperfections you might have with your custom trays you can compensate with your final impression. Okay. So just to recap, we have our midline, our incisor of papilla, the crest of the ridge, the maxillary tuberosities, our palatini foveae, 
and of course we have the outline of the attached and detached gingiva where we going to finish our custom tray. Any other questions as far as that is concerned? Everybody caught up with as far as their outline is concerned? Excellent. So what I'll do next, I'll move to the lower cast or the mandibular cast and we're going to go through pretty much the same motions. This one's a little harder to identify the extension of the tray. But I think, again, like we did on the upper, the more information we can put on there, it becomes a little bit easier. So let's start in the same sequence again. Let's identify the frenal attachments. So I got my labial frenum. And I got my left buckle frenum as well as the right buckle frenum. If you have any bubbles on your models, you can certainly go in there with an instrument and pick them out. If you have little micro bubbles, don't worry about those. It's not, it's not a big deal at this time. Let's identify the crest of the ridge. Again, this is the highest portion of the residual ridge. And I'm just going to remind you all the time to anchor your hand you're holding a pencil with, anchor that hand somewhere on the cast. Notice I'm anchoring my right hand with my pinky, with my small finger on the cast to create this almost like a hinge motion with my right hand. And notice that I'm rotating my cast to make that same motion. So as you can see in relation to the background, my pencil is always coming towards me. I'm, rarely do I outline something with my pencil away from me. Because I think I have better control when I'm outlining, and eventually we're going to use this technique later on when we start setting up teeth and waxing up the case, carving things with a different instrument, obviously, with something, something like this, that you're going to be carving towards your, your torso, not away from you. So again, if we can just develop these good habits from the beginning, it makes it a whole lot easier as we're working through the case. So again, over the crest of the ridge, all the way to the edge of the cast. In fact, I'll take it over right to the outside. Okay, the next little bit I'm going to identify what we call the retromolar pads, which is this pear-shaped type of landmark back here. And this is a very important landmark for a couple of reasons. Because it's a primary support area for the lower denture. And also, the richer molar pads are used when determining the height of the teeth that we're going to set up eventually. Because even though throughout the patient's lifetime, this atrophy of bone, this resorption of bone continues, we can't stop it. 
the richer molar pads, they stay where they are. Okay? It's a fibrous tissue. It's not solid bone like it is here, but it provides a, a primary, area, primary area of support as well as it helps us identify the height or the occlusal height of the teeth as we're going to get to know it later on. The other area we can identify is this what we call masseter groove, this area right here. This is where the muscle on the side of your face attaches to the bottom, to the top and lower arches. So if you were to put your finger on the side of your face and clench your teeth together, you feel a flex of there, that's where that muscle attaches on the lower jaw. So we want to make sure that when we fabricate our lower custom tray, that we go around that attachment. Otherwise, when the patient chews, if we cover that attachment with the lower denture, every time the patient chews, they'll flex the denture out of position, which is not good. Any movement with the prosthesis is not a good thing in the oral cavity. Okay. So now I can go back to the black pencil here. Maybe not yet. Sometimes you'll have an attachment in here too. Let me correct myself. Not sometimes usually. It's called the lingual frenum. So we have the labial frenum here and we have the lingual frenum here. This one is kind of vague, but nevertheless it's there. Sometimes you might have little bony projections on the inside of the cast here, on the lower cast. These projections or what we call lingual tori. We have somewhat one on the left side, not so much on the right, but we need to identify those. And the reason why we need to identify those is that we need to create ample relief with our custom tray to make sure that we don't create a pressure spot when we're finalizing our impressions. Because those projections or those tori become very sensitive with any pressure on them. Okay, so as far as outlining our lower custom tray now, we're gonna go back to the black pencil. And just like the upper, you know, you sort of develop a sequence where you start and where you finish. I like to start just around the richer molar pads back here. So we want to make sure that our outline is past the richer molar pad outline. It's going to cover it completely. Again, I'm holding my model about 45 degrees in relation to the bench. And I'm allowing my pencil to find the deepest groove and try to avoid this masseter attachment here. And I think that's as far as I'm gonna go with that line because here becomes very vague where I'm gonna go. Maybe right now. Eventually when you do enough of these, you'll know exactly where you're going. But let's move to this part. I'm gonna move over to this buccal frenum. Good millimeter to a millimeter and a half of, of relief. And as I come down the buccal frenum, or the labial for that matter, you notice that my relief, if I can just go back to the upper, it's not straight down. There's a slight little angle as I go around this frenum. Almost like a little V groove on either side. 
And this is where things get a little bit sketchy here. So once again, if you're having a hard time seeing it, you can put some vertical lines here. I'm gonna rotate my cast, anchor to the bench, anchor my right hand to the cast. And join the two halves together. So you should have something like that. Just give you a second to catch up. And certainly we can do the same thing on the other side. Or continue as you are and make your way to the other side. There is no wrong or right whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever makes you see and identify that attached, detached junction, that's the ultimate goal. So I'm gonna continue here. Go around this labial frenum. And notice again, I'm rotating my model so when I'm up scribing my pencil line, it's towards me, not away from me. I might go away from me just to go over it again, but the initial scribing is, a, is to me. And it's never one continuous line. It's little back and forth. And I think that makes it a lot easier to find the deepest point on the cast here. If you have trouble seeing it, once again, put some vertical striations there, rotate your model. And outline the extension of your tray. Should have something like that. Generally, the extension here at the labial portion and the buckle portion here, you notice it's pretty much the same length, very close to it. You're not gonna have one way down here and the other one way up there. This should be around the same length. <clears throat> so I'll continue this way. So rotate your model when you first start doing this. Rotate your model, that gives you a nice view to what you're about to outline. Like I'm not gonna hold it this way, which is away from my, from my view, to start outlining. I'm gonna rotate it so I'm looking at it straight on. It gives me a nice view where I'm going with this. So this area here, just inside the masseter groove, like you see on this side, not so noticeable here. Sometimes they're even, sometimes they're not. As you'll see here, this side will look a little bit different. This is what we call the buckle shelf. And this is another area of primary support for the lower denture. So it's very important to capture this. And the only way you're gonna capture this with your lower custom tray that you will eventually fabricate is to identify it now and make sure you extend that tray all the way there. You can almost see a little ridge right here. So what you wanna do is continue off your richer molar pad, go around this masseter attachment, and eventually join it with the rest of your outline. Notice the outlines are rounded. They're not angled at all. Everything is rounded, it's smooth. Everything looks like it's on the same level, same length. And now we're gonna get to the inside or the lingual portion of the outline. And for some models, a lot easier than others. 
I think this one is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go around this lingual freedom. I'll just go back and highlight it in red. Now, as I'm working through this, my pencil is getting pretty dull. So you need to continuously sharpen your pencils to make it a little bit easier outlining accurately. So I'm gonna go around this lingual frenum. I'm holding my cast at about 45 degrees to the bench. I got my right hand anchored to my cast or the bench, whichever way you're comfortable, whether it's your pinky or your middle finger, whichever way. Or both for that matter. And I'm going to gently move my pencil back and forth and surely enough it makes it to the deepest portion here. Now right about here I'm going to stop just before my retromolar pad up here. This is a very important area and a very difficult area to capture. This is what we call the retromylohyoid space. And if we look at it from this angle, there's a lot of undercut here. And it's very important to engage that undercut with a lower denture. It's not easy to capture it, but once you do, it makes the lower denture very stable. Almost, I mean, I'm using the term very loosely, locks the denture into place because you're going to have one on one side and one on the other. So from here on, what you want to do is to create a nice transition now from the top of the retromolar pad right to the bottom of this outline. So I'm going to hold the model to give me a nice view. I'm going to be rotating the model in a way that I can make a, a gentle curve and join the two together. So once again, this outline is not a straight line. It's always a curve. And I've gone a little bit past the richer molar pad inside this retromylohyoid space. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'll start at the, at the lingual frenum. If you, again, if you have trouble seeing where you're going, you can certainly put in some vertical lines. But I think for the most part, if you hold your model properly and you move your pencil back and forth, you'll be at the right spot all the time. It's not very important at this stage in your learning getting this line 100%. You might be off one way or another, a millimeter high or a millimeter low or two millimeters high or low. But as long as we can get fairly close and eventually with ample experience, you'll get that line all the time. What's more important is when we get to the custom trays is that we actually finish our custom tray to that line. Okay. So back here, I'm going to start on top of the richer molar pad, move my pen pencil back and forth, and make this gentle curve all the way down to the deepest portion. And that gives me the outline of the lower tray. Now I've made some trays before 
Let's see how that matches with what I just did here. Fairly close. A little bit off here. So hopefully this year, because I'm that one year more experienced, I'll make a better trade. So for that reason, you guys are gonna have to make three sets of trays to hand in. And you're gonna indicate the best one that you've assessed for me to mark, okay? Any questions as far as the outlining the landmarks that we require for the upper and lower custom trays? Any questions? Excellent.